they come out and say, well, there were other people who claimed to be the Messiah, and they try to give historical evidence. They claim, oh, Mary, that it, it, there was no virgin birth. See, there are people who are teaching things that are breaking out core values. And we're arguing over a Christmas tree. Yes, yes, Lord. <clears throat> We've got preachers arguing back and forth on YouTube like there are two rappers battling on the corner. Mm -hmm. And we wonder why the world does not want to be a part of us. Mm -hmm. See, we argue over what Sunday communion should be on. We argue over should we all drink out of the same cup versus not. Right. And we got stuff twisted up. Yeah. We talk about people instead of helping people. We focus on building big buildings. And nobody's in them. Mm -hmm. And we're not reaching out to anybody. You're telling the truth. But we're going so far beyond what our purpose is, what the Great Commission is. <clears throat> we need to stop focusing on preaching to the same people who bounce from church to church to church, but focus on reaching out to other people. But the thing is, if we don't live our life right Monday through Saturday, nobody wants to hear about coming to your church, coming to your program, watching your DVD or listening to your tape. We, we just need to focus on what's really supposed to be going on. See, we'll have preachers all around the world preaching about Tiger Woods, but they won't speak to the men in the church who are doing the same thing. See, we, we, well, the pastor or the elders and the deacons doing the same thing. We can't talk about athletes having all these kids when you've got preachers with just as many kids out of wedlock. I know we're not supposed to talk about people, but, but we're supposed to preach against sin and false teachers. See, if you preach on marriages being strong and beating your wife, you're a false teacher. False. Uh, oh, and this has nothing to do with my message. I, God's just bringing this to me right now. Freestyle. <laughs> when the world sees as much hypocrisy in their daily lives, and when they look at the church and see the same hypocrisy, honestly, why would they want to be a part of us? And we say, okay, well, they should look beyond that. Well, if we don't look beyond it, how can we expect them to look beyond it? We need to focus <clears throat> on exactly what God has for us to do. I'm going to be coming from some very familiar scriptures. My basis will be out of the second chapter of Matthew. And... I'll be beginning actually beginning at the, at the very first verse and I'm not even going to play and put my glasses back on. <laughs> I'll be reading out the New King James Version and it reads as such. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king behold three men wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, <coughs> saying, where is he who had been born king of the Jews? We have seen his story in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written, by the prophet, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, we had secretly called the wise men, <coughs> determined from them what time the star appeared. And he had sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, 
They departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then being finally warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, <coughs> they departed for their own country another way. My subject is simply Jesus, the gift that keeps on giving. Okay. As we read this depiction of a story we're very familiar with in the book of Matthew, I actually found some very interesting things that I never really realized. First thing, this story is normally depicted with the wise men coming upon the baby in the manger in the stable. But if you notice from the text, Jesus was already in a house. They weren't in a stable. Now some scholars say it might be two months after his birth. Maybe a couple of years. Again, I can't read that deeply into the word. God didn't tell me no different. All I know is he was in the house. <clears throat> Another thing I really didn't realize is the fact that we really don't know where the wise men came from. Some call them wise men. Some scholars call them magi. Some call them scholars. These were men from a faraway land east. Most people say it's ancient Babylon, which we would know now as Iran and Iraq. These were people from another culture with other religions who, the only reason they were looking in the sky <clears throat> was because they were students of astronomy and other religions. See, point number one, God can speak to people that no one would think he's going to speak to. See, that's a great gift because if God didn't speak to us unusual people, none of us would be saved. Mm -hmm. Because all of us are an ex something. Yeah. I don't know what you're an ex whatever. Yeah. I'm an ex gambler. I'm an ex drunk. I'm an ex booty shaking DJ. <laughs> I, I, we, we, hey, hey. I had every loop song and I can break it out in a second and think like, no. <laughs> I'm just going to be real. I, I was an ex-angry person. I was a person like Saul who liked to persecute the saints. See, that's something. But God spoke to me when people didn't think I could be spoken to when I, I saw the star. Amen. And it wasn't a physical star. See, the star they saw wasn't a natural situation. See, the star appeared. There were hundreds, maybe thousands of people probably looking in the sky that night. But God showed those three wise men mm -hmm. and led them. Most people say that journey took them a couple of years to get from where they were to where they needed to be. It doesn't matter how long it takes you to get to where God has for you to be. Amen. You just need to keep on going for the journey. See, yes, that's sir. It's something God doesn't determine just doesn't stop you. Just because your journey may take a while. See, some of our journeys to salvation and deliverance and sanctification has taken time. We've had ups and downs along the way, but the gift of grace yeah. is something that none of us should ever take for granted. Amen. Because if it wasn't for grace, again, most of us wouldn't be here.